every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see Welcome you this morning to Home Road Nazarene Church. As you can see, our teens are helping us today lead in our music today, and that was trust in you. We're going to ask you as we continue this morning in our worship, all who are able to stand with us, and we're going to continue worshiping in song. We're glad to see you today. We have come uh, to worship the one who has called us into his presence this morning. And so we are so grateful that God has drawn us into this place so that we can worship him today. So let's continue to worship as we sing. song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other Say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, we live for you. Sing holy. 
only to the Lord.
Thank you so much for singing with us this morning. You can be seated as we continue in our worship. Good morning. Thank you, teens. And if you don't know, there's even more teens in the back running all the computers and doing stuff that I don't know how to do. <laughs> so we're grateful for all of them for participating and helping today. Um, we'll have the kids come forward at this time. We're going to pray together. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together in your name. And uh, we are also grateful for the teens who have led us this morning. Thank you for their commitment and their efforts that they have shown today. And um, I know that they're even a good example to these kids who are now up front. And um, I just pray that um, as we continue to worship and to listen to you and uh, what you have for us, I pray that we would put away distractions and set them aside so that we can hear you clearly. God, thank you for these children. Thank you for what they mean to us. And uh, may we always be one um, who show you love and show love to others. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Good morning. It is now time for offering. May the ushers please come forward. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity to give back to your kingdom through the gifts you give to us. May this offering be used to further your kingdom and bring glory to you. Amen. Good morning. If you're watching online, please comment so that you know you're joining us. Happenings today, the teens are taking over. Following the AM service, teens will be eating lunch together and going bowling. Happenings this week, ladies Bible study, Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Praise team practice Wednesday at 6 p.m. Outreach for January. Today is the last day we are collecting diapers and wipes for the Pregnancy Resource Center. We will wait to deliver your donations until next week, just in case you forget. Um, reading the missionary books, there's a link sent by email, or you could check out the books in the foyer. The February church calendar and birthday and anniversary list is available on the bulletin board by the elevator. Cancellations. Um, watch Channel 7 or check your email to see if there's churches canceled for the week or not. Fair time with Pastor. Aren't we proud of these kids? Um, and I've been around long enough, I remember, and I know they love to hear this, when you were just this big. Well, hey, you never know. I don't think we're going to make them a prayer request, but they might, they might need it. We do want to remember the Brammer family, the Baker family and their loss this past week, Sue Cartwright's niece, Cindy, Naomi's son, Daryl, the Huffman family is also still dealing with grief. Ron and Eleanor's daughter-in-law has been diagnosed with some issues. We need to pray for Jane. Continue to pray for Jeff Berg. He's making some progress and we thank the Lord for that. Eleanor's uh, brother Jim needs our prayers. Of course, Janine's uh, Sister and brother-in-law, Mark and Janet, need our prayers. Carol Sanger's friend, Ruth. Pray for Scott Hiles. So many others who are dealing with COVID right now. 
Cheryl Early's sister, Tammy, needs our prayers. We're thankful that Chelsea's doing better. We thank the Lord for that. And then Dina Nisley has some, some family members and friends that need our prayers today. There's so many. That's just this prayer list. And you probably brought a request with you, maybe some that you can't even share. Anybody like that? But the Lord knows. Yeah. Will you stand with me? As we pray today, the prayer altars are available. If you want to come and represent a need, please do that at this time. I'm glad to have you to come. This time is important for us, and we want to represent these needs. Let's begin with the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the privilege we've had today already of being led to the throne of grace in worship with our young people. Thank you for their lives. We just want to pause and pray for them today and ask your special blessing upon each one of them, your protection. And Lord, as they think about the future, may they walk with you every step, every day of their lives. We give you praise today for answered prayer. All we have to do is look around us and see that you have answered prayer in our lives. Some of those seem to be small and yet we're so thankful you care about the small things. Lord, we ask that your help and your strength would be for those who grieve today. I just thought about it this morning in the last six months, how many of us, including myself, our families who have dealt with the loss of a Dear loved one, we pray for them today and whatever they're dealing with in the grieving process, so often anguish and sometimes anger and frustration and all those kinds of things that go with it. But Lord, we're calling upon your name and upon your promise that you would bring comfort to those who grieve and we ask that you would do that. We think of those who are dealing with COVID and those who've been in the hospital and those who are recovering. And Lord, we just want to give you, uh, we want to give you the praise that you're the great physician. We're not letting go of that. We're trusting you today. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. In some cases, Lord, we're just going to say praise the Lord anyway. Lord, uh, we come today a needy people. Thank you for this family that prays for one another, cares for one another, laughs with one another, cries with one another. That's the way it should be. As we've gotten to know each other, Lord, it's a very special family and we thank you for it. We take these requests and we lay them at the feet of Jesus and we bow before Jesus in praise. For he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, our coming again Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Just one more note in testimony and praise. Everybody turn around and look that way and say, hi, Donnie. It's great to have you back. Yes. God bless you. Today's scripture comes from John 3, 16 and 17, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son in the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. What a privilege it is to be here with these youth and their families. What a wonderful job they do. 
the sun is shining outside. That's a blessing. And we've been given another day to share his good word. Well, the kids just, they inspire me. I don't like calling them kids because they're young adults. They, they, they so inspire me. Come on Wednesday nights, it's always, it's a, it's like Wednesday's like, oh, I'm, I'm already into a busy week already. And most of us probably are in the same boat with school and work and you name it. Come on Wednesday night and what a blessing. They're just up here. Pastor Rick works with them in the music and they're singing, they're having a good time. It's just kind of uplifting. It kind of, it's like that, that uh, little bit of upbeat you need for the middle of the week. So we're just about all the way through this month already for 2022. And a few weeks ago, if you remember, we talked about setting your uh, personal goals, your goals, self-centered versus God-centered. So I'm just curious how your, your goals are going. Have you stuck to them already? I think, I think our treadmill's collecting dust again already. It didn't take but a, <laughs> a few weeks. However, one of my personal goals for this year has been to uh, become more God-centered let go. I am so particular with certain things. I'm so, everything's got to be just right. And it wears you down, trust me. And when you let go and let God, it just starts to take off. And that's been kind of one of my goals. It's, it's going okay. Sometimes you don't have enough time to even thinking about it, but it's, it's going okay for me. So I chose the scripture for this morning a few months ago. And thanks again, Ryan, for reading that. I appreciate that. I chose it a few weeks ago, and it just seemed like the good Lord's been tugging at me. The Holy Spirit's been calling me and said, Jeff, it's, it's, it's time to kind of get back to the basics. I do this a lot at work when things get really busy and chaotic and hectic. I just kind of remember the, remind my, my folks, hey, why are we here to begin with? Don't forget we're here to protect and serve. We're to do those basic things. But let's go back to that. That's where all this other stuff comes into play. Then it came to me what we do here every Sunday. We're here worshiping. But going back to the basics of your salvation, that is what the good Lord was putting on my mind, and that's what my sermon is on today. And that's, that's why we're here every Sunday, to bring people to know Jesus, bring them to know who he is, why God sent him, why he died on the cross for us, and then what we're to do from there, make disciples across the nations. It's actually in our mission statement, and for those of you that are kind of new, we used to do a bulletin on a regular basis, and it says our mission is to make Christ-like disciples in the nations, starting right here with our neighbors. So that's what we're going to do today. And what a gracious and wonderful gift the good Lord has given us, this simple gift of salvation. Um, so that is what we're talking about today. So going back to gifts, I just want to talk to you a little bit about, have you got recently received any kind of a gift that uh, you weren't really expecting? At our house, we have to, I have to make Christmas lists. I don't have to, but I'm asked to make all these different Christmas lists, and they have to all be different. That's hard to do. Like, I really don't need anything, so I come up with these Christmas lists. Well, this year I got something that wasn't even on any of these Christmas lists, and it was really awesome. I got these things. I always, I think they're AirPods, EarPods. They're the Apple things you wear in your ear. They're, they're wireless. They are really cool. I, I was not expecting it. Uh, I, I like listening to music when I'm working on some homework or working on church stuff. And, and I, I got these things. I'm like, okay, these, these are kind of neat. I mean, I try them out. Well, when I'm working around the house, it'll actually read a text message to me or tell me who's calling me. So it's like, this is really neat. I was not expecting this. And it's like, that's one of those gifts. Like, wow, that was kind of, wasn't on a list anywhere. I'll take it. This is really cool. So uh, I was, it, was, it was kind of a blessing, an unexpected blessing. Now, going back to the basic gift of salvation, again, what a gracious gift that we have been given by God, and it's the gift of eternal life in his presence and with his son, Jesus. It's all about salvation. Now, for some of you listening here today online, um, some of you here today, this may be the first time you hear about this. You hear people say, I've been saved. I found Jesus. Um, you know, you hear these things. Maybe some of our young folks, you might hear it in school. This might be the first time you're hearing this. Now, for some of us here, this is probably a totally unexpected topic maybe to be talking about today. And for some of us here, we might be taking a little bit for granted because you know, I got saved so long ago, I'm good to go. I, I, but I'm telling you, when you get tied up with work, you get tied up in the business of life, sometimes it's a great thing to go back to why you're doing what you're doing. Just going back to the basics. 
And we don't want to take that to granted and take it for granted that God so loved us, as Ryan read, that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for me and for every one of you sitting there looking up at me this morning. So what's the most important thing for all of us here today to understand is that salvation, your salvation, is a gift from God. And all you have to do is you have to decide if you want to choose it or not. Real simple. That can't get much more basic than that. So here's a definition of um, salvation. The redemption of people by God involving forgiveness of sin and reconciliation to God through the atonement of Jesus and the work of the Holy Spirit. Simply put, God loves you. He wants you to be in a real relationship with him. And that can only have happened by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross and through the work of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to go back to John 3, 16 and 17. This, again, is that scripture that embodies why we're here and embodies the good news of Jesus Christ. So the scripture reads again, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And for God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And again, this entire gospel, the good news of Jesus, is that's the focal point in the book of John, the gospel of John. And it all came about when he was talking to this fellow by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was a leader. He was a high-ranking official in what they call the Sanhedrin. He was like a high, it was a council. These folks didn't agree with Jesus. And oddly enough, his name in Greek basically means conqueror of the people. How would you like that to be your name? Conqueror of the people. Now, some of my youth in here might think the parents, whatever their names are, might be conqueror of, you know, me as a, as a teen, because all the parents are always wanting to know where you're going, who you're going with, and when you're coming back. Those are some really simple, basic questions that moms and dads typically are asking. And as parents, it's always easy to start with no, then kind of work from there. But the kids don't. The kids don't like that, do they? So here's Nicodemus. He had just witnessed some miracles by Jesus, and he's wanting to know who this. He says, this fellow is definitely from God, but, but I want to, is he the Messiah that we've been told about? So he had some questions, and he, he goes to him at night. This is back in John 3, chapter 3. So there's a lot of speculation why he went to him at night. Was he so busy during the day doing church business that he had to go at night? Some speculate that he didn't really want to be seen around this Jesus that everybody was like, you know, in confrontation with from the Pharisee side. So, but he realized that Jesus was different, and he wanted to go have a chat with him. And he basically, he was asking him, you know, what is this all about? And Jesus simply tells him, hey, Nicodemus, God so loved the world. And what's important here is that world. That is everyone. As we read in John 3.16, whoever, everyone, that is all. But all he had to do was believe in Jesus and what he was saying, and he would have eternal life. Nicodemus, again, was asking about eternal life. What's it take? And the Bible doesn't really tell us a lot about Nicodemus, but what we do know is he left that meeting with Jesus. We know what he did for a living. And when he had got done talking with Jesus, he was a changed man. He believed. That's all it took was one conversation and for those of you that may remember this, but uh, interesting enough, Nicodemus was with uh, Joseph of uh, Arimathea and helped bury Jesus after he was crucified on the cross. So it stuck with Nicodemus. It wasn't a one time, okay, I get it. I'm going to go on to the next thing. It stuck with him. He left there born again, a changed man. He, he listened and he just, put the, we, trust was one of uh, quite a few of our words today in our music. He trusted. He just trusted. Now, here Jesus is telling him uh, about this gracious gift of salvation. And all he had to do was believe, as I just mentioned, and trust. And then Nicodemus was not expecting that. He wasn't sure what to expect. I think it was probably more of a confrontational thing. So he left there with that unexpected gift. It was like, this is all I have to do. And he believed it in here. And he believed it up here, and he believed it in his heart. And what a better gift that he could have, nothing better. I mean, no AirPods or anything, but he got the gift of salvation. I like this comment in one of the Bible commentaries. All great men had their favorite texts, but this has been called everybody's text, speaking of John 3.16. Herein, for every simple heart is the very essence of the gospel. That's it. You can't get much more basic than that. And as I mentioned, what is important in John 3.16 is that word, whoever. 
God's love is so big. We, we, are, we have no idea. You know, his, his love is so big, we have no idea how to even begin to understand it. Uh, like we went to the Grand Canyon uh, back in 19 with our youth. You stood there and looked at the Grand Canyon. You could not see the whole thing from where you stood. You just could only imagine how big it really is and how awesome it really is. God's love for us, his, the world, his creation is how big that is. And he sent his one and only son for all of us to die on a cross for him. And all these folks had to do, like Nicodemus, was confess with his mouth, believe it in his heart, that Jesus Christ died, is going to die on a cross, died for us on the cross, and believe it in their heart. Romans 10.9 reads, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Here's another key verse from Ephesians 2.8. For it is by the grace, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves as a gift from God. And there's that word gift again. Remember, a gift is freely given. He's freely given this to us, and all you have to do is freely choose to accept it. He's given us that ability to choose. We know from the time we probably even before we're walking, the difference between right and wrong. What is a lie? What isn't a lie? What's the truth? All you have to do is freely choose to accept. Nobody makes you take that gift. I didn't, I wasn't forced to take that gift I got at Christmas. Sometimes you may have to be, boy, you didn't have to do that for me, but you kind of, you know, it's one of those things like, wow, this is really nice. Thank you. What a wonderful gift it is that God has for every one of us sitting here today and everywhere in the world, this gift of salvation. Now, many people have heard um, and probably memorized John 3, 16. We probably started that way back in uh, Sunday school. So what about verse 17? I've been told by some, and I know the pastor has too, that verse 17 is almost as important, maybe more important than verse 16. Verse 17 again. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it through him. God sent his son so that we could choose to believe in him or not. Those who don't choose to believe in Jesus, or they're bringing judgment upon themselves. That's simple. That's about as basic as you can get. And really interesting here, at the end of the Gospel of John, the book of John, Jesus somewhat, he summarizes his ministry uh, in chapter 12, verses 44 through 46. He summarizes it like this. Then Jesus cried out. So you got to wonder... At the time, you know, you got the, the crowd then was you had the Pharisees and everybody that was there, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, the Jews that weren't believing who he was. Do you think he was crying out like, hey, this is your last chance. I'm the Messiah. He cries out, whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seen, the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. So why do we we put so much emphasis on this? Let's go back to the basics of salvation again, that eternal life with God, the presence of God. We were all born sinners. We must admit that fact. We must believe and admit that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. We must confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of your life. And just as important, you must understand that God loves you and he's given you this gift of salvation. He sent his one and only son to die for us. And all you have to do is have faith to believe and accept that wonderful gift that he's he's giving to you. So do you want to have eternal life as we talk about in John 3.16? The life of abundant joy, endless blessing in the presence of God forever. Or do you want to perish? That's the perish part. It's a harsh word, tough word. Do a little bit of research on it, and the Greek comes back to tell us. The Greek word for that is apolemy. Here's the description or definition of, as it's used in this verse. Perish means to destroy. Destroy utterly. To put out of the way entirely. Abolish, put an end to, ruin. Gone, done. Complete opposite of eternal life. So that's the decision folks have to make when you want to accept salvation. You want to have that eternal life? You want to be done utterly, gone. 
And you hear me say this up here quite a bit. God created you. He loves you. He wants to take care of you. He created us to first love him so we could love each other. Then we can live out that love. You, like I say, you hear me say that all the time up here. It really can't get much more basic than that when it comes to salvation. It's a big love story. Where do we, where do you fit into that big love story? Some of us may not even know what our story is yet. That light's not come on yet. We might still be in the darkness. What is your story? It's kind of like, you know, when you find out, uh, you know, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. When that light comes on, wow, how do I fit into this story? I have a young uh, fellow I work with. He was adopted from birth. At 40 years old, he found his his real parents, his, his biological parents. He was in a story, but when he found out who his real parents were and how he, he really figured out then how I fit into this big story. It's kind of like us. When that light comes on and you make that decision, I'm all in. I want to have this relationship. I want to be with God. Then you start to understand where you fit in to the story. And God starts that before we're even, before we're even born. He's got this thing called prevenient grace. It's a seeking grace. It's a wooing grace. He's, he's chasing after you. My young folks in here that have boyfriends and girlfriends, you're kind of wooing each other, maybe doing it by text, however you do it now. I don't know how it works. We used to talk on the phone or we'd actually like sit down and talk to each other. Uh, but I think you start off texting and then you go to maybe talking, then I don't know. I don't know how that works. So um, we're well past that phase. But before you were even born, before you even had an idea who Jesus Christ was, before you even had an idea of anything, God was chasing you down. He does that with everyone. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, somewhere and somehow, we're all just vessels, somewhere that awakens that person like, I want to know who this Jesus is. That's when that person become, starts to become born again. And when they're saying, I think I found Jesus. Jesus has never been lost. God's never been lost. It's us. And we can stray away at any given time. But what a wonderful thing it is when the Holy Spirit awakens that in you and says, it's time. It's time to take that step. It's time to move forward. God is seeking you, and he wants you to be in that genuine relationship with him. And he's given you that freedom to make the decision, that wonderful gift of salvation. Just like Nicodemus, when he left that conversation with Jesus, he was a changed man. He was born again. And what we have, Jesus Christ walked on the earth. He was with his disciples. We have something even so much more. He tells us in Romans that it was something so much more intimate. It's leaving us with the Holy Spirit. It's here. It's everywhere. Is God seeking you and wooing you? At some point, the Holy Spirit's going to ignite and it wakens you to decide, I want to be all in. Let's move to something that uh, we all kind of are familiar with. Does everybody in here know their ABCs? We kind of got the ABCs down. Some of you might know it in different languages. I used to kind of know a little bit in French. Hey, high school kids, don't take French. I, it doesn't really help a whole lot around this area. Spanish is probably a better way to go. However, going back to technology, I've got the, you know this uh, cell phone thing in that. Every time I, I had, uh, my wife and I used to do VBS quite often, and I had, uh, I forget what VBS it was, but there's a song, Admit, Believe. What was the rest of it, Carol? Admit, believe, and forever receive. Well, for whatever reason, every time my Bluetooth connects to a car, my work car or a personal car on my phone, that song comes on automatically, and I have to figure out how to get to iTunes and stop it, and it's just playing as loud as whatever I got to turn. I don't know how to, I don't know why it does. It must be, I have no idea. So I hear that song all the time. So here are the ABCs. Give you something to work with here and write down of God's gift of love and how to freely choose it. A, A is for admit that you have sinned. Admit that you have sinned. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That death is the perish part. So that's admit. B for believe that Christ died for you. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we admit we have sinned. We believe that Christ died for us in the sea. 
This might be the tough one sometimes. Confess that Jesus is the Savior and Lord of your life. Romans 10.9 If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So the ABCs. Admit, believe, confess. I have that song stuck in my head. And that's it. That is all it takes to begin this wonderful journey with Jesus Christ to have eternal life. All it takes to be in the presence of God. Admit, believe, confess. So this is kind of the the meat of why I'm up here this morning. I've yet to get one of the youth to to do the preaching part. They've kind of got the rest of it down. I, I can't do any singing or playing of instruments, but we have a young man on the piano. We have a young man on the drums. We have a new young man on the bass. We have young ladies singing. We have young folks in the back running all the computer. And it takes a little bit to do that. You were Facebook Live. Everything's got to be working just right. They're monitoring all the audio. What a, what, a, what a blessing we have in these youth. And I am such, I am so blessed to be here. Uh, I'm just a vessel. Like I've said here before, I'm just a fellow up here trying to tell you about who God is and why we're here every Sunday. So let's get to it. We come here every Sunday to worship together and to learn about the good news of Jesus Christ. That's in our mission statement. That's in our mission that we've been given by Jesus. So let's start right here, right now, doing this. I know there are some of you in here this morning struggling. You might be struggling with life. You might be struggling with school. You might be struggling with work, family, grief. You might be struggling with anger, with sorrow. Some might be people in here might be upset with God right now. Why did so-and-so have to pass away? Might be some folks in here right now struggling with addictions, with pain of any kind of pain, tough decisions to make, worrying about things, feeling some guilt about something you may have said or done or something you didn't do or didn't say, feeling some anxiety, feeling some fear. I can, This list can go on and on and on. I know what it's like to be in some of those spots. I uh, truly have had my heart broken a few times. That happens as you go through life and you have children and families and so forth. It hurts. And I don't know how folks do this without Jesus Christ in their lives. I do not know how you can even get from here to there without having that hope. Yeah, life's tough still. I told the kids all this, uh, the youth all this time, and you know, when you accept Jesus into your life, it's not just a, a walk in the park. It's, it's a pretty rough go at it. Look at our Lord and Savior, all what he was tempted right after he was baptized. But, but what is important here is that you understand that all it takes is Jesus. I, I admit I'm a sinner. I know you died on the cross for me, and I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. That's all it takes to have that eternal life. Nothing fancy, nothing outrageous. It's very simple. Back to the basics. We were recently asked to provide a list of all of our youth the, since we've been here, and I think we started with the graduating class of 2011, going through, what's our most recent class, 26 or 27? 27. 40 some kids are on that list. And that's not what we have done, it's what you all have done as a church body. Those young folks are up here discipling a few Sundays at a time. What a wonderful thing to shine into the light. You know, this, what up here they're doing is just simple discipling. We've had folks come up here and sing, and it's like, I, you know, wow, amazing. I just so enjoy it. So, for those of you who have not given your life to Jesus, why not start today? It'd be a wonderful time to do it. We have some wonderful altars up here. All it takes is that first step to get up and out of that pew. Uh, been told a story before about a young man who has no idea how he got up out of that pew, but it had to be the Holy Spirit awakening in him and getting him to make that first step, to make that decision. I don't know where everybody's at in life in here, but I'm sure things are kind of going all over the place. 
with everything you're seeing in the news, uh, the world conflict that's probably going to start taking place here before too long. It's going to affect us in some shape or fashion. All it takes is that first step to get up and out of your seat. All it takes is the Holy Spirit to move you in that direction. And God is seeking you, as we mentioned. He is wooing you. He wants you. He created you to love him so you can love others. And it starts with that first step. That is all it takes. He is seeking you, and he he wants you to be in a relationship with his son. Eternal life versus perish. You don't want that perish. All I'm asking is if there is someone in here today If you can make it up to one of these altars, come right on up. We will pray with you. The pastors are here, aside from myself. We can start that journey. It doesn't take much more than just, I'm all in. Admitting, believing, and confessing. And that first step is tough. I know it. I know know what it's like. When I was in, uh, when I first started going to church way back uh, with my parents, I'd sit in the back. It was a good place to sit. It was easy to get out, easy, easy to leave. But as you get involved, you get, you get into it. You know, I, when I go to classes now, whatever I'm doing, I'm in the front row. I want to see what's going on. I want to be there. So we know life is short, and sometimes it ends unexpectedly. So I would hate for anyone to waste the moment of not having that relationship with Jesus. I pray right now for those who would want to come forward to come forward. If you can't get up out of your seat and you need someone to come to you, just raise your hand. We'll come to you. We'll pray with you. If you want to come to the altar just to refresh everything, going back to those basics, you just want to say, I am recommitting, I am all in. What a wonderful time to do that this morning. It's just a great time to kind of get back to why we're here. And for us to go out and make Christ-like disciples throughout the nations, We have to have that relationship with him. And again, here as a church, we just, we we love all of you. And we just, we're such a praying church, as the pastor mentioned here a little bit ago. And it's time to get back to the basics of that salvation. So as I go to prayer time, I invite anyone to come up that would like to pray for anything. You just have a blessing that you would like to uh, just be thankful for. You have a concern, you have a, you have a worry, you have whatever you want to give it to God because I'm telling you, it's, it really starts to help. In life, you just have that hope when you start letting go and letting God. So as we go to prayer time, I invite you to stand. And again, if anyone would like to come forward and just make sure you get the attention of one of our pastors here and we will definitely pray with you. Let's go to prayer. Oh, Father, we just thank you for this time that you have given us to here today. And we just thank you as the wonderful reminder that there's there's no uh, there's no checklist or anything here to do. It's just a very simple thing that you have given to us. Salvation. You've sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for each and every one of us. And all we have to do is admit that we were born sinners. And all we have to do is believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us and confess that he is now the Lord and Savior of our lives. And we just need to invite him in. That's all we have to do is just invite him in. And Father, you take it from there. That's, we're just a vessel up here and we just pray the Holy Spirit is working on folks here today. And if they do have any kind of concerns or just want to get that journey started, they come and get one of us before we leave here today. And Father, we just thank you again for these youth It's been wonderful having them up here today again. And we just pray that you be with us as we go from here and we continue to shine for you. Amen. Let me leave you with this as I normally do. It's very simple. Some simple words to remember. Admit, believe, confess. That's it. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jim. Man, the Lord is good. It reminded me when you were preaching uh, this morning, Jeff, I, I'm going to mess up the quote just because I, my, my memory, my above 40-some memory now uh, is not going to come through. But uh, Carl Barth, the theologian, was asked 
one time, uh, when were you saved? And he said, somewhere around 33 AD when Jesus died on the cross. And, uh, and, and there's so much truth in that, that we um, come to this place where we accept what Jesus has already done for us. And so we're grateful today. And so we're going to respond to that this morning, even in song, as we sing of the mercy of the Lord, that his mercy is more. And we say, thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord this day for the goodness of his mercy. And so let's worship together today. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more.
we are so grateful for the mercy of the Lord that is more. Grace that is greater than all our sins, as the great hymn uh, says that we sing from time to time around here. So take that with you today. Thank you for the good words today, Jeff. Thank you, teens, for helping to lead us today. Uh, thank you all who are here worshiping, both in presence, in, in the in the room with us today and online and thank you especially to our lord who is here binding us all together so please receive this benediction as we leave this morning now may the god of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ he who calls you is faithful and he will surely do it. Thank you for worshiping with us today.